This one is our newly elected representative to the House. I've become, I've come to know Brad over the, his election campaign and other things. And this young man has got it together. He's going to do a great job for us. It is my honor to present the Honorable Representative Brad Paquette. Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm Brad. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm absolutely blessed to be in front of you all today, especially in this historic place. As a history teacher over the last decade, I've simply marveled at the endurance of our great nation. The struggle for independence, the challenges, the victories, united times, the ones of division, the delicacy of the experiment of freedom on this earth, a government erected to maintain and secure our freedoms, all of this with which we grapple and as our American independence hangs in the balance. Abraham Lincoln stated in his Lyceum address that not all the armies of the entire world with Napoleon as a general could even force themselves onto this land to take a drink from the Mississippi, but that if our country were to fall, it would be from within. Which is why it is a staple that our independence and freedom will always depend on the virtue of our citizens here in the United States. In 1895, during Reconstruction, around 60 years after this courthouse here that we are at was erected, Booker T. Washington spoke in front of many former slave owners down in Atlanta, and he used an allegory that I want to share with you all today. There was a ship lost at sea in the South Atlantic Ocean, and they were running out of water. And they were having sailors die day to day of thirst until they found themselves adrift and they saw a friendly vessel of which they signaled to. They said, please, we need water, come help us. And the friendly vessel signaled back and said, cast down your buckets where you are. And they signaled back, they said, no, you don't understand, we're dying of thirst, we had a sailor die today. And the signal came back, cast down your buckets where you are. A third time, they signaled, we need water, we are dying, we're perishing. And again, a third time back, cast down your buckets where you are. So they threw their buckets over the side of the ship, and they brought up sparkling, fresh drinking water. Because little did they know, they had wandered adrift into the mighty estuary of the Amazon River, pumping for hundreds of miles fresh water into the Atlantic Ocean. I have been among many that believe that their boat is floating along salty water, not even worthy of being tested. We have neighbors that could be considered salty, family members, and folks from across party lines. It seems that at times, and maybe most times, that if we cast down our buckets where we are, it will only make us more thirsty and worn. But our country's independence depends on citizens that are able to cast down their bucket where they are. In our independence, we tend to keep our buckets on deck stubbornly and seek out water where we only know where it is. I hope to share with you all a little tidbit of insight that I believe I've captured during my short tenure in the Michigan House of Representatives. I sat with our governor one-on-one -on -one a few weeks ago. She happens to be in the other political party. I asked her, how did the state of our nation come to be the way it is today? And if we can't change the current pattern for healthier, then who will? I left that conversation knowing that I must cast down my bucket where I am. And I will cast down my bucket here today, there tomorrow, and together always. Casting down our buckets where we are, drawing up from the connections and commonalities that we all share among us as Americans. We will continue to protect and sustain the independence of this great nation as we do so. I hope you all enjoy the fourth and you're able to cast down your buckets among the other Americans that you encountered today. Take care. <laughs>